Hey everyone, this is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. Today I want to talk about selling your beauty product to chain stores. So if you have a great consumer product, such as cosmetics or beauty products in general, this little training will give you some quick tips and strategies on how to do that and how to get started today. A little background about me, my name is Karen. I've sold millions of units of products to the world's largest retailers as a manufacturer's rep. Started my career out in New York back in early 2000s. And for the last 11 years or so, I've taught 50,000 or more companies across the globe on how to approach, pitch, and sell the retail chains, online retailers, catalogs, and so forth. This information is for people across the globe with various products, teaching people the strategies to success with stores. So with that said, let's talk about the beauty category for retailers and some strategies that would help you get started today. So uh, there are a lot of product types within this category. Obviously, if you have a cosmetic product, uh, it's a little bit different than an eyeliner in this type of thing. Um, but generally speaking, a lot of retailers tend to combine these products into one area of the store. Uh, and the reason why that's important is because buyers purchase for different product categories in general. And so if you have a beauty product, look for the beauty buyer and so forth that could support you. Um, as I mentioned, it depends on retailer and so forth, but ultimately they have buyers for every product category and they're looking to purchase new things. It's a very competitive market. I'm sorry to say this to you guys. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go after stores. It just means that there's a lot of people creating beauty products in all those different categories, and you're going to have to differentiate yourself. Um, one of the problems people have is that there's just these major brands, and they're out there, and they are dealing with the retailers consistently, whereas other categories, you're not dealing with as much competition with big corporations and so forth. So, you know, all the L'Oreal's and the Almay's, they're all coming up with a variety of different products as well as the higher end stuff and so forth. Whatever it is for you, just be aware that if you're going to come up with products that are for the cosmetic and beauty industry, you're just going to have to really reach out to retailers very strategically, come up with your best story and your best foot forward so that you can support yourself. There are people out in the world who can help you come up with your pitch and your story. Uh, we do stuff like that, but just just because of the nature of this audience, you're just going to have to deal with the fact that you're going to have to come up with a really, really attractive story for the buyers uh, to be interested in your product. Sephora is an example of that. Every person who has a cosmetic or beauty product really wants to sell to Sephora. It's a great store. It's a lot of fun, and it's always a dream retailer. The problem with retailers like that in niche markets is that all of the people who are reaching out to them um, are reaching out to them. So all of your competition is contacting them and so forth. I'm not trying to be negative here. I just want to give you some things to consider and then help you kind of think this through in a positive way as well. But anyway, so Sephora is a retailer that every single beauty company is reaching out to. So if I had a beauty or cosmetic company, yes, I would reach out to Sephora. However, I would probably lean toward anybody else initially because if Sephora says no to you, most people get rejected. They feel awful. They don't want to continue on. They think there's something wrong with their product. It's really not true. Imagine every single major uh, company, small company, everybody's content contact in that same retailer and so you know Sephora gets a little snobby about that so if I were you I would diversify if you had a kind of a cheaper product maybe consider going after the Walmarts or Targets of the world uh, or the CVS's or Walgreens of the world versus the department stores there's so many different ways to sell to them but don't forget supermarkets and drug stores and stuff for your product um, there's a lot of ways to sell a, a product into retailers and it doesn't have to be the one that everybody wants to sell into. Again, you should go after Sephora, but just be aware that they might reject you a little bit more and they're looking for sales and more revenue from you a lot of times just because of the nature of their business. So there's nothing wrong with going after other retailers and maybe coming back to them once you got some more sales and stuff if they do say no to you. With beauty products, packaging is key to your success because as you've seen, they've come up with outlandish 
packaging for the beauty industry and there's a reason for it. There's just a lot of noise. So how are you going to come up with something that's really going to be spicy and exciting? And it doesn't have to be complicated, but I would put definitely some more effort into packaging and making it more pop off store shelves uh, so that the retailers would be more inclined to work with you. Again, it's hard to share all this stuff based on categories if I haven't seen your particular product, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas, things to think about. Brand is obviously important. Like if you're going to try to sell to Macy's or something like that, they're definitely going to want to have a variety of different products that they buy at the same time uh, and a whole assortment, whereas, you know, you can sell to Walgreens and just sell one unique product. So also if you have an entire product line versus a product, it does depend on which retailer you want to go after. Um, and the higher ticket retailers, the more they expect really well-known brands and stuff to be in their stores. So definitely um, need to do your market research to figure out which direction to go. So again, you can go after the department stores, you can go after the online retailers, you can go after uh, supermarkets, you can go after the drug stores. It really depends on your product and your category and your pricing, um, how popular you are if you're just getting started, uh, you know, just maybe try not to go after the retailers that are just going to uh, want a whole series of products versus individual stores. These are things to consider. Uh, by the way, a lot of these retailers love diversity. So if you are a diverse supplier and so forth, definitely want to explore um, getting a certification to be a diverse supplier. This basically means you're a minority owned company. Uh, they love stuff like that. Um, there are organizations and I have separate trainings on certifications and so forth in other recordings of mine. So uh, you can always take a look at our free 90 minute training that we have listed on retailmba.com. Um, we have it on every page. So if you want to just um, opt in to get access to a full training on uh, on everything there is to know about selling to retailers, we, we talk about certifications and so forth if you want to learn more. But generally they love uh, diverse suppliers and so forth, because a lot of times in certain industries, certain retailers, uh, diversity is common with their audience, and so they care about their audience. Places you could conceivably sell to or Groupon, Halt Look, uh, depends on if Groupon Goods is still selling stuff. Uh, currently they are, they do change um, and so forth, but uh, you know, there are retailers uh, that you can sell to, but then there's also websites, right, that you can sell to and so forth. So the bottom line is, if I can give you any quick tips and strategies, it's just to really think about which direction you want to go based on your price, based on how many products you have and so forth, and uh, then create a plan to go after them and choose accordingly because it's really going to matter because of the fact there's a lot of competition. There's so much more to say about the beauty industry. If you want to learn exactly how to approach, pitch, and sell to retail chains, we actually have, as I mentioned, a free training on retailma.com slash free. Uh, just sign in and you'll get access to uh, a webinar that we do to teach people how to get products into stores and we get into much more details if this is of interest to you. Um, if you want to go to one of our upcoming live events, virtually or in physical uh, sense, uh, we have events, uh, we do master classes quarterly. Uh, we have a year long coaching training system, do it yourself programs done for you services, all sorts of things listed on retailandbay.com. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to communicate with you and we work with so many different uh, brands. Definitely take a look at our testimonials um, and see how much uh, success people have had with our information and courses and uh, services and so forth. And please subscribe to our channel and like this and support us. Uh, we appreciate you, share with your friends, and thank you so much for your time. Karen Waxman, Retail MBA Brands, I appreciate you.